This is going to be Chapter 17, Clinical Decision Making and Teamwork. And after completion of this chapter, you'll understand these concepts. Uh, paramedic approach to clinical decision making, developing a paramedic field diagnosis, the importance of enveloping a mechanism of injury or nature of illness, differentiating between emergent and urgent, and methods of improving of improved clinical decision making. Uh, clinical decision making. Uh, clinical decisions uh, made using a process process of systematic analysis and critical thinking. Um, clinical decision making, uh, process of assessment and treatment planning. <clears throat> Medical intelligence, uh, systematic approach to clinical decision making, uh, process of learning from experience and past practice and then coming to a decision. So you learn best in this by seeing it in a clinical application. Starts with information gathering, patient history and physical exam. Uh, the data is then compared against the, your knowledge base, previous experiences, anecdotal information, and formal medical education. Concept formation is a process of forming an idea and based on inductive uh, logic. The data is reduced to a single theory or hypothesis, and this, is, this would be based on what you think is going on with the patient. The patient's diagnosis is based upon a collection of patient signs and symptoms, and symptom complex. Symptom complexes are compared to knowledge base to find symptom patterns. Now, ordinarily, a paramedic is hard pressed to make a diagnosis of disease in the field. Generally, a medical diagnosis is made after an exhaustive medical test by a physician and a deductive process. So, paramedics don't have the resources or the time to use deductive logic in the field. That's because we're kind of using 1970s medicine to assess the patient and try to get the correct medical diagnosis. The diagnosis that we apply to them tends to be broad in scope. Uh, treatments are derived from the diagnosis tend to be palliative or relieving pain or alleviating a problem. Paramedic field diagnosis is broad and all-encompassing conclusion and generally identifies a disorder or syndrome uh, that we can correct. Uh, Symptom-based care, treatment of the patient with supportive care based upon their chief concern or complaint. And that's what we're trying to get to here. So very simply, we take a look at the patient, we evaluate the empirical evidence that we have, and we come to a conclusion, and that would be our field diagnosis. The method of paramedic practice. Starting with the patient's chief complaint or concern, the paramedics forms a cognitive map of potential etiologies or causes uh, of the chief concern. Conditions are contained and essentially a script in the paramedic's mind. An example of this is an idea that an associated symptom complex and an associated field diagnosis and treatment plan. So you see what the patient is actually exhibiting. You make a field diagnosis and a treatment plan associated with that. Uh, initial impression. Paramedic must first make a decision whether the call is medical or trauma. In trauma calls, we look at mechanism of interest, injury and suggesting trauma or nature of illness in medical. Mechanism of injury is a force that create physical harm to the patient. So an example of this is they didn't have their seatbelt on and they slid forward and struck the windshield. Predictable injury patterns or the mechanism of that specific injury pattern will increase your index of suspicion for a specific injury. Example again. A spiderweb windshield, I would think that my patient would have a possibility of having some head trauma. And then we also look at kinetomatics. There are some definitions in this. And kinetomatics is the study of motion. So by looking at the study of motion, understanding that energy units get delivered into the patient whenever they come into contact with solid objects, we can deduce that the patient had trauma in this area and we guesstimate at that point or make a knowledgeable logic conclusion. Tests. Choose specific tests um, with the greatest yield of information. Now a paramedic must choose those tests that have the greatest yield. Be aware of the specificity and the sensitivity or exa example of this would be the test's predictive value and a good example of this is 12 lead. <clears throat> Just because the machine says acute myocardial infarction is suspected doesn't really mean that the patient is having an infarct. However, on the other side of it, it doesn't mean that they're not having an infarct. So the machine may lack the specificity and not read acute myocardial infarct suspected. 
you always need to check the machine um, on any kind of diagnosis system machines have. An example of this is if we got another machine in the future that said the patient was hypotensive, we would need to validate that outcome or that finding by empirical evidence. Very simply, whenever a machine gives you results, <clears throat> be skeptical of the results, understand the limitations of the machine, never rely on one test to make a clinical decision. Differential diagnosis, Occam's razor. If all things are equal, the simplest solution tends to be the best one. And very simply, common things occur commonly. I like to change this up a little bit. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and talks like a duck, it's a duck. Good chance that if they have emphysema, asthma, COPD, and they're short of breath is their complaint. That their chronic disease probably had something to do with it. Treat the patient, patient aggressively, very simply, and assume the disorder can actually harm the patient. Symptomatic approach. If you see a symptom, try to figure out the most logical conclusion. Use your head and your knowledge of physiology and apply what you know. Barriers to effective clinical decision making. A knowledge base can soon be outdated. That's our number one barrier. Because we know something today doesn't mean that we know it tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, Kaizen is a Japanese concept for continuous performance improvement. Improving our clinical decision making can be obtained from practical experience with a master paramedic or a paramedic that's a mentor. Protocols. A set of mandatory behaviors meant to be applied in a specific clinical condition. Assume one patient's situation is similar or similar to another. Patient's condition in the same condition. Some patients may not fit into the mold, though, so we can't fit everybody into a cookie-cutter protocol. The protocols themselves should be looked at as guidelines. Paradigm blindness. Unwillingness to consider alternatives to patient care other than the routine care because it's always been done that way. So changes in protocol or treatment patterns uh, and having paradigm bl blindness would be a barrier to making the appropriate decisions. Fear, the greatest danger of any paramedic's clinical decision making. Paramedics should strive to see situations as challenging, not as threatening. Ways of improving clinical decision making. Shared decision making, and this goes beyond consent and engages the patient in a conversation about clinical decision making whenever possible. Places interdependence on the decision making. Patient is consulted about clinical decisions. Patient concordance is the process of shared decision making, it includes a communication of risk versus benefit, uh, the advantages of compliance, and a shared responsibility to report changes. If anything changes, I want to be the first to know. Fosters openness and trust and decreases dissatisfaction. Treatment. <clears throat> Paramedics typically start patient care with empiric therapy. Treatment based on initial observations obtained during the primary assessment. And we pretty much consider this basic life support. And evaluate. The process of assessment, treatment, and then reassessment is consistent with quality improvement cycle, which is I made a plan. I do the plan and I check and I act on my check. So plan, do, check, act. Disposition. Paramedic care is in the beginning of the continuum of care and it puts patients into the treatment pathway. Clinical decision making is the process of a systematic analysis using medical intelligence and critical thinking aided by input from a team which in the end is the basis for the plan of care. The paramedic of the future, a thinking practitioner who essentially operates almost independently in the pre-hospital environment. By using methods in this chapter, the paramedic can move away from blindly following protocols towards a thinking professional practitioner. References for this lecture were taken from Richard Beebe, Professional Paramedic Volume 1, Foundations of Paramedic Care, First Edition pages 310 to 320 of Del Mar Learning. If you have any questions concerning this chapter, feel free to contact me. My name is Roy Smith, smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.